Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's pretend, well, not pretend, let's do it. This is question number 26 from your 1105 final exam review. Suppose I ask you to sketch the function y equals 2 to the x power. Okay? Now, that function is referred to as, let me get a better pen, y equals 2 to the x power. That function is referred to as an exponential function. And the reason, of course, is we have a base that's um, between, you know, well, it's bigger than 0, not equal to 1, and our exponent is x, so it varies. One way to graph an exponential function is to, you know, use your graphing calculator, correct? Always, if you have a graphing calculator, always remember your first step in graphing is zoom 6. That will take you to a standard window. And then, of course, you would type y equals 2 caret x. And then close the, um, you know, make sure that uh, if there's any parens, you know, straggling, you always close them. But in this particular case, um, y equals 2 caret, it gave you a left paren, you type in x, you type a right paren. And what you're going to come out with, and again, this is just rough, but what you're going to come out with is a graph that looks roughly like this. And this graph touches the y-axis at 1. So the ordered pair 0, 1 would be the y-intercept. And if I sketched in this broken line on the x-axis, which is the line y equals 0, um, the line y equals 0 is actually my um, horizontal asymptote. Okay, in other words, the graph gets closer to that line, but it never touches it or crosses it. And I've taught my students this type of um, exponential graph is sometimes called a growth curve because as time moves from left to right, if you pictured really quadrant one, if you pictured the time getting bigger, the substance is growing. So this is sometimes referred to as a classical growth curve. Now, if I asked you to use your knowledge from this class and to graph 2 to the x minus 1, let's call that function g, by using the above graph, what you realize that you're actually being told here is you're being told to do a shift. You're being told to take the old graph and the minus 1 moves it down an entire unit. So, if I have the x-axis here, and the y-axis here, and I want to draw this graph. Let me put on my arrows to be totally perfect, as close as we're going to get. Notice that the old graph had y equals 0 as my horizontal asymptote, while my new graph would have the line, and I'm dotting it in. The reason you do a broken line when you're drawing asymptotes the asymptotes are actually not part of the graph, but it's important to see where they are. So the line y equals negative 1 is a horizontal asymptote. Notice that the old graph crossed the y-axis at the order of pair 0, 1. Well, if that dropped down, my new graph would cross it at the origin, at 0, 0, because, of course, the minus 1 takes 1 away from the y-value. And now when I emulate the same picture I had before, a little curve here, the only difference here really is I've slid the graph down one unit. So instead of the horizontal asymptote being y equals 0, my new horizontal asymptote is y equals negative 1. And remember, if anybody ever asks you to show points on a curve, for example, like with our first curve, if you used your calculator to graph y equals 2 to the x power, all you have to do to list points for them 
would be to go to the uh, table, and then, you know, if you go up and down in that table, you have as many ordered pairs as you want to list. All right, and in general, in algebra, if somebody asks you to list ordered pairs for them that are pertinent to a graph, a lot of times they're referring to the x-intercept or intercepts if there, you know, if there is one, and the same for y. Okay?